Welcome everybody to another episode of the Nerd Generation. I'm your host Pablo Solano. Unfortunately, Mr. Tracy Spivey won't be with us this week, but I guarantee you he will be back. He's probably hanging out with Freddie. We haven't seen Freddie on the show for a minute, so I don't know what's going on, but we will certainly track Tracy down and get him back on the show so we can hear his commentary and perspective on this genre. Joining me tonight is uh, he's becoming a regular on the show because we appreciate his perspective, his knowledge on the genre, uh, uh, and one of the people I enjoy talking to about this genre with, Mr. Brian Schultz. What's up, Brian? What's going on, P? I'm good, man. I'm good. How, how's everything with you? Not too bad. Not too bad. It just feels like every week we're getting a curveball thrown at us here. So pretty, yeah. pretty interesting, interesting times after kind of waiting for news for a while. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's is the emotions is almost like a movie right <laughs> that's right um before we begin i just want to thank everyone who has shown us support please remember to hit that like button hit that subscribe button and share the content with other people who are into this genre where today we're going to be discussing three topics we may go here we may go there we may go everywhere but we won't last too long on on each one but we'll just try to tie all these things together first we're going to be talking about the casting of mr aldous hodge definitely diving into the hawkman character and uh sort of talk about a little bit of other things that's going to be uh tied with this as well um then we're going to discuss um the perplexing the return of Jamie Foxx as Electro. The first thing I thought about this man was this probably showed up on We Got This Covered and this is just a fake sort of drumming up clickbait type of uh, news. I don't know how, it, how, how you reacted towards it, but I was confused i was like why is this happening what, what how did you react to this uh this was one of the most surprising and not necessarily in an upbeat way pieces mm-hmm. of news to come out of marvel related properties in a long time i i i, I was absolutely stunned yeah. when i saw this and i did the same thing you did i started clicking 10, 12 links to make sure this was a legit story and not some kind of plant or some kind of April Fool's joke in, yeah. in, in the fall. But uh, I'm shocked. Yeah. Maybe that's a bad pun because it's Electro. But I'm shocked <laughs> that they're going back to the well on this. Yes, yes, that is perfect. Um, so we're going to dive into that. And then we're going to discuss it, uh, something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. and And that is how people feel about characters being um, having their, their, their character being changed to a different ethnicity. You know, we've known a character to be a certain ethnicity for over 50 years, 75 years in some cases. Right. And to change that aspect of it, I mean, we can certainly say that, people are okay with, for the most part, with Idris Elba taking over the character of James Bond because James Bond was a novel. We never really saw him. We just know what he's like, right? And he just, when they put him on, finally put him on film, you know, right? He, he, he he's, he's Caucasian, but in terms of the attitude, Idris Elba would have been or could be perfect. Would you agree? Oh, for sure. I still hope it happens, even though I guess we're hearing rumi- rumors that uh, Tom Hardy may be getting lined up for that part. And I guess even Henry Henry Cavill said he'd love to play it if, he, if there was interest. But no, I think uh, Idris Elba would do a fantastic job in that role if he was given it. Yeah. So we're, we're going to dive into the, you know, the, 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 the news that we're it's, it's weird because we're OK with certain casting. Right. That changes the ethnicity, I guess, of, of certain characters and, and some we're not. So we're going to probably. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that. So, Aldous Hodge, Hawkman, has been cast 
and uh i was i didn't know how to feel about it at first i don't know too much of aldis highs other than seeing him in uh uh what's it called um, damn straight out of Compton. i don't know if you saw straight out of Compton. did you see straight out of Compton? i did it's excellent he did a solid job but it wasn't a standout performance of, in my opinion and i am interested in seeing the invisible man he's been getting a lot of he's been getting a lot of praise for that um um movie so i i definitely want to check that out to see to, to learn a little bit about him i know he is also on a show i don't know the name of the show but he's on a show with i believe kevin bacon on showtime city on a hill as i think what yes you're yes 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 so the only thing is you know I, I when i first saw the trailers for that show you know i was interested but i haven't heard anybody talk about it that much um so i haven't checked that out um but tell me what you thought of that news and um how do you think this is going to play out so i actually think the role if you look at his filmography that maybe the most applicable is actually the TNT TV series Leverage okay. uh, that was on for a couple of seasons. He was one of the thing. He was like a computer hacker on that on that team, and that's sort of what I emphasize here is that he's been part of a team oriented type program before. And I think at least we're getting teased this idea that Black Adam's going to introduce the Justice Society, and you know Hawkman certainly fits into that that profile. So. You know, that may be a direction they're going in. I, I think for me, I, I have a tough time forming any opinions about Black Adam because we just haven't seen anything. I mean, what we saw at, at Fandom was, you know, basically a, a comic book, a pages of a comic book on screen. <laughs> it um, looked like Marvel, so looked like have, Marvel yeah. Knights. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have a sense of the visuals. We don't have a sense of the tone. And my mm. biggest question, honestly, is given the rock is at the center of this as Black Adam is, you know, what is the rock willing to do and what is he willing to share to make a team oriented story come to life and until i know that i think it's impossible for me to say is this a good casting or is yeah. it not because we just yeah. don't know what aldous hodge is going to be asked or allowed to do yeah. as hawkman in this story yeah i i certainly agree with you on that um it, it, listen avengers worked why because we cared about all the characters how did they do that they gave us exposition on each of these characters so when we finally saw this team movie we didn't have to know much else we knew this was building towards something if you run down the list and granted some of these might be you know crazy but street fighter Mortal Kombat, um, Justice League, um, what other team-based film, oh, G.I. Joe, uh, these movies tend to not work because we, I, I feel we don't care about them enough, and obviously probably is not a good story, but we don't care about these characters too much, right? So they're giving us the Justice Society, we don't know who or how these guys are going to portray these characters that we know from the comic books. That's one thing that Kevin has done. He's made sure that he's tried to um, embody these characters in the comic books and bring them to life. Just these guys, Warner Brothers hasn't done that. Is And, and Dwayne Johnson doing this film, you know, he wants to be the Thanos of this universe. He wants to be that big villain. Can he pull it off? Five years ago, I probably think so. Right now, The Rock does what he wants. And nobody can tell him any different. And that's what I'm afraid of. Agree. I think your best case scenario is it's Fast Five Rock. Right? There is a situation where he came into a franchise where there were other team members, other stars sharing the screen. And even though he was still a commanding presence, mm -hmm. he was not stealing and dominating every single scene that he was in. Yeah. And he added a lot. That's a great well, it's a great film. I think if it's more 
entirely centered on Black Adam, then it's going to be a tougher sell. And I would point out the movie is called Black Adam. It's not called Justice Society. So yeah. I think at least to some extent we know he is going to be the lead. The question, like I said, is is who else is going to be co-lead or whether you know this is almost more of like a small supporting part meant to tease something else down the road. We have no idea. Yeah, we don't, we don't know where this is going to go because... Listen, this could be a disaster. Is The Rock is going to make money? But will it be critically acclaimed like the Avengers was? Like Infinity War was? Like Marvel's Avengers was? Is it going to be well received? I don't know. And um, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm not too excited. And there is a certain other reason I feel a certain way about this is because of something that we'll discuss a little bit later. Um, but, um, yeah, let's see how this works out, man. This, I, I, I curiosity. That's all I have. <laughs> curiosity. The one positive I'll take from it is the fact that we're getting casting announcements and supporting roles means mm -hmm. this movie might actually happen. Yes. Because yes. this thing has literally been on the rocks calendar for about 10 years. Yeah. Yeah, and and not for nothing, I believe he's seen what Marvel has done, and he and, and the Rock looks like he's a person of competition, right? And I I don't know if you remember, we've discussed this on the podcast before. I don't know if you were a part of it, but I've said there was a there was a video that he tweeted a long time ago that he said that his people was trying to get in touch with Marvel's people to make something happen. I highly doubt. Marvel wanted to pick up that phone call. I think that's more of a control issue, though. I think mm -hmm. The Rock has reached a status where he, deservedly so, mm -hmm. has an incredible amount of say start to finish in any production. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, to defend, to defend The Rock, I think the downside of having The Rock anchor your movie is incredibly low yeah. in the sense of he doesn't he really doesn't give you terrible output. The mm -hmm. question is whether you can get truly great output yeah. from something he's starring in. Like the Hobbs and Shaw, you know, Rampage, is, you know, any movie that he's Sky's leading, great. Like, you know it's yeah. gonna make, you know, it's, uh, what was it, San Andreas. Yes. Like any movie that he's leading, you know there's gonna be a baseline of quality that he's going to deliver and his charisma is gonna make his character work on some level. And the movie's going to make some money and it's going to have some cool effects and things like that. But the question is, yeah, as I said, like, can, can he reach a level of sort of greatness with a role or a film um, to to make it really stand out in this genre? And that's sort of the TBD here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. The Rock has earned the, 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 the respect and the right to have some say into what he wants to do and how he wants to do it. But with Marvel, there's a certain way or Ed Norton or Terrence Howard or Edgar Wright. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think Norton's the, the, the right analog for what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and, and quite honestly, Ed Norton, a more critically acclaimed actor, oh, yeah. at least from a sort of serious standpoint. But the control was the issue. Yeah control was the issue there and he and he was you know the incredible hulk is his favorite comic book character I mean, he bleeds green you know? yeah but, he yeah and even so like they, they they couldn't make it work creatively yeah and not for nothing brian and i've said it on many a show and in many conversations where everybody where anybody is willing to listen ed norton was the best incredible hulk he was the best I think part of that's because he truly understood the character. Yeah. Like he had read probably every comic and probably had read it multiple times. He truly did understand the character. Yeah. That was not at all the issue with, with what happened there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens with uh, Warner Brothers and their Black Adam film and the Justice Society and, and, and Hawkman. Um, second topic I want to get into um, was a surprise, was a confusing one. Mr. Jamie Foxx will reprise the role of Electro 
in Spider-Man 3. I don't know what to think about this. I have my thoughts, I, I, obviously, but I, I want to hear yours first before I, I chime in because you might cover it all. So what are your thoughts on Jamie Foxx reprising the role of Electro? How did you receive, how did you receive this news? This, to me, is one of the most questionable decisions that we've heard out of a Marvel property in a long time. So, number one, I don't know that's, why. That's a key word I don't right know there. why they want to establish any connection back to the Andrew Garfield films. Is that a multiverse thing? Like, I don't know why that is Possibly. even something they want to do. Mm -hmm. Number two is, I don't recall, and listen, I mean, Jamie Foxx has won an Academy Award. He's a great actor. Uh, he can do whatever he wants. I don't recall his incarnation of Electro as being something that fans or critics necessarily loved the first time around. So if nope. this is going to literally be the same character, that's a, a very strange road to go down twice. He, he, tw um, he, he tweeted that he's not going to be blue. This is, I think this will be different. But I still have my doubts as to how different it is. It's Jamie Foxx, right? He's a, yes, he's a great actor. and But how different can he be, you know? Because the last portrayal of Electro was, quite honestly, to me, one of the lowest points of his acting career. Which also then leads to, you know, on the one hand, we know Sony is desperate to, you know, get anything they can out of the Spider-Man universe. And certainly this plays into Sinister Six. We also know that Kevin Feige is now has his fingerprints, at least on the Spider-Man franchise and basically anything that Sony wants to do, which sort of implies that he wanted this to happen and was OK with it. Mm -hmm. I find that surprise. I find that a little bit surprising, to be quite honest. So. You know, as always, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. I give Marvel the benefit of the doubt. But this, I just, this is a very confusing turn of events. Could it be, and Brian? I, I, could it be? Could it be? You think back to Mahershala Ali just making the phone call and Kevin casting him right then and there. That was quick. We won't have, there's nothing written. There's no dates. There's nothing. Just the just that we know that Mahershala Ali is going to be Blade, and we know and we all know how that happened. And Kevin Feige is a fan of Mahershala Ali. Could this be the same scenario? Jamie Fox calling Kevin Feige, his people calling Kevin Feige, like, "Hey, Jamie Fox wants to be Electro again. He wants to do a different job." Jamie Fox can sell you a bad car. <laughs> Well, it's not the same, though, because Mahershala Ali didn't play Blade true, <laughs> 10 but, years ago. True, but what I'm referring to is Kevin Feige being a fan of Jamie Foxx and, and not wanting to say no to him. I don't know. My best guess is he believes in Jamie Foxx, the actor, and maybe there was something ingrained in that performance that he thinks they can pull out in a different direction. I would be shocked if this is literally the same character pulled from that same universe into this one. That would just seem so bizarre to me. And such a strange decision uh, on all fronts that I guess I'm, I'm sort of assuming this is we think we had the right actor for Electro. We didn't give him the right version of the character or the right script, and we're going to try to do it differently this time. I, I have to think that's the most likely scenario here versus an actual, yeah. we're going to acknowledge the amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2 as part of this multiverse. Yeah, because if you do that, then it's like, what, do we get that horrendous portrayal of, of, of Rhino? With Paul Giamatti, do we? I, God, I hope not. Exactly, but that's a can of worms. If you're if you're going to go that route, then technically everything in those films should be sort of canon to a piece of the multiverse, and that also doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Multiverse, you can do anything. I get it, but it's still a weird 
Yeah, I mean, weird track to go. Just because you can do anything you want doesn't mean you need to do everything. No, I agree. So, I don't know, man. I, I think, listen, again, Jamie Foxx followed his career since In Living Color. I never looked back. I've seen everything pretty much uh, of what he's done in his career. Again, Electro wasn't his finest moment. Um, I think personally, Jamie Foxx has that pull. He has that. You can't. If, if Jamie Foxx calls, you're going to pick up that phone call. You know, if Jamie, if Jamie Foxx makes you a believer. This isn't this isn't a referendum on Jamie Foxx as an actor or an entertainer. I mean, that's he's he's way beyond uh, us cr- criticizing or question. This is about one specific role and why either the studio or the actor want to go back yeah. to that I, role. I, yeah, ex- that's ex- the question. Exactly. Um, did Kevin have the last say? I, I would assume he did. Or I, I don't know how that went down. What do you think? So the only other thing which I'm curious about is we know Sony wants to get Sinister Sticks on the screen. Was there anything contract related around this where if they wanted to use the Electro character, there was a clause in Fox's contract from the last time around, which I'm sure included some kind of sequel when he first signed it. Was there anything where he had like a first look or they had to kind of go through him? Yeah in order to bring the character back that's the only other like wrinkle in this that i quite possible would would want to ask but we'll have to wait and see it's crazy times (laughs) crazy times yeah so we'll wait and see and see how this turns out i mean if kevin can pull this off man he is he's already an icon but I can't say nothing more about Kevin. I can't listen. I, I I won't. I can't forgive him right now for the Hulk. I think he's done a horrendous job with that character. Um, but if he pulls this off and they make it work, you know. Oh, this is the heat check. This is the heat check. This is the heat check. Yeah. Right. This is I. I've, I've made ten threes in a row, so I'm going <laughs> to step out to forty feet and I'm going to try something. I'm going to be like, I can do this too. This yeah, is what this yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see if that works, man. Let's see if that works. Our final topic um, is something uh, uh, that I've been thinking about, and um, and it's and I'm referring to, what I'm referring to is this. When we spoke about Alden Hodge, there was something that I was referring to that we'll speak to about. We'll speak about later, and that is characters being their char- their ethnicity being changed. And everyone was sort of uh, um, not necessarily well surprised because it was it was it was breaking news, you know, that Jonathan Majors was cast as, as Kang the Conqueror. Everybody was hyped about this casting, right? And what do we know about Kang the Conqueror? Me, all I know is that he's a, a, um, um, a descendant of Reed Richards in the future. And uh, some would say that, yes, he was Caucasian at some point, And then he, you know, his his he evolved. Um, there have been rumors of uh, John David Washington. Uh, of him, possibly. These are rumors, um, but I've seen it a few you know, on a few websites and people mentioning it in Twitter and all that of him playing Reed Richards. Also, there have been rumors of possibly Magneto, Professor X, possibly be also being uh, their ethnicity is being changed um, to people of color. I don't know how I feel too much about. I mean, there's certain actors that can pull pull it off, like Mr. Jeffrey Wright. Yes, Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, I'll believe that. But. Characters like Bruce Wayne, characters like Superman, you know, you can't change their, you do whatever you want, but, you know, the authenticity of it sort of, 
it's, a, it's, a, it's just a huge gamble and I don't know how I would feel about it. I don't know if you agree, but you know, some characters should be who, you know, what they were from the beginning. You know, obviously in the comics, they changed Nick Fury from a Caucasian to, to a person of color, you know, and, they, and the guy that, that, that created him, he thought of Samuel L. Jackson, right? And everybody was cool with it, I guess, right? Or is cool with it. But, you know, Alden Hodge and then the rumors of X-Men characters being changed to, to people of color and uh, uh, Batwoman. Um, a person of color was casted for, for, for Batwoman. People have mixed feelings towards it. How do you feel about it? So for me, I think it's a very simple distinction, which is does the ethnicity of the character inform the identity of that character mm -hmm. and the story that you want to tell? So a very obvious example is Black Panther would be very tough to change <laughs> the ethnicity of because the entire genesis and the a lot of the main themes and the storylines around that character tie back to the ethnicity yeah. of the character. Yeah. So if you're going to be true to the essence of Black Panther and the world of Black Panther, there's a ethnicity that goes along. So that's a distinction. But I'm gonna actually disagree with you a little bit mm -hmm. on the broader pick question. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna draw in a line actually from Thor Ragnarok, because mm -hmm. I've thought about the same question a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a line in Thor Ragnarok that you say a couple of times where they say, Asgard's not a place, it's a people. Mm -hmm. And I think you can make an analogy that these characters are not a race they're a persona mm -hmm. a lot of them mm -hmm. and the only reason they have the ethnicity they do is because of the era and the generation in which they, they were, were created, originated yeah. and the original writers who were making them so to me there is not some sort of sacred text that says bruce wayne's ethnicity can't change because if i think about his origin story his identity as a businessman, what he does as a vigilante, there's nothing about that that requires him to be a certain ethnicity, in my mind at least. I, I don't think so. I think you could you could you could adapt every aspect of his story, life story and character, and it would be fine. And I feel the same way about Superman. It's like, okay, he's from another planet. Why can't that other planet have other other ethnicities or or you know be portrayed in different ways like why can't the kents be different like to me the, it just it's not impossible it's just it's, it's, we're used to the we're used to the other way yeah. so it might take a little while to accept but to me the identity of the character can be preserved and adapted and, and modernized quite frankly in some ways to where you can do that i mean let me ask you this like 30 years ago would you have thought that Miles Morales as Spider-Man would have made would have worked? I I think a lot of people would have had reservations, mixed feelings. Said, well, no, Spider-Man's Peter Parker. He's a he's a Caucasian high school kid. But the next iteration of Spider-Man on screen, I can pretty much guarantee you, is going to be Miles Morales, and it's going to work really well because it worked really well in Into the Spider-Verse. And by the way, every time I watch Cobra Kai, the kid who plays Miguel on that show could absolutely play Miles Morales right now. I think certainly 30 years ago, Miles Morales would not have worked. Um, but Miles Morales is a separate character than Peter Parker. If you were to change Peter Parker into a, a black kid, then most people would not accept it because of who they know P Peter Parker to be. Miles Morales is more acceptable because we know him to be of a certain ethnicity. Uh, changing Bruce Wayne and Superman. Yes, the f we are familiar with them being or looking a certain way. And for me, it's just about there's just so much more story to be told. And to change them, you know, would be, I don't think, I, I think people will have their reservation and will certainly be vocal if that were to happen. I guess my question to you with some of those characters would be, were they 
were they initially created because at the time it was judged impossible for there to be anything other than a Caucasian Superman, Batman, what have you, right? So effectively you're taking you're, you're taking the powers, you're taking a lot of this, a lot of the similarities uh, or, or pieces of that character, and you're creating another character, a, a differently named character with a different ethnicity because you're just not allowed by the editors, you're not allowed by the norms of that time to actually change Superman himself. And I guess I'm just positing that, you know, if we're, I call it progress. I guess I call it progress if we're if we're able to get to a point where the where the S is on the chest of someone who's a different ethnicity. Because like I said, when I look at the origin of the character, what it stands for and or what I you know and and how it interacts with Metropolis or Lex Luthor or Perry White, I I just don't see anything in there where you can't make it work. You know, but that's where I, I say I go back to, you know, you mentioned Magneto. That one's a little more interesting to me, because if we go to the idea of you know, his origins, you know, as they were shown in the original X-Men film, where it's like, oh, it's World War Two, it's concentration. Camp. Like, OK, now now you're starting to tread toward a territory where, again, the 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 heritage of the individual actually has a, has a meaning to what he becomes as a mutant and that and that's to me always that's where it becomes a little more of a question um but i think for me i think if it's a great performance people there will yes will it draw turn heads of course it will but if there's a great performance and a great film i think we'll watch it and celebrate it and it will start to break down even more barriers than than we're already seeing so i'm actually okay with it and i i actually would be very interested to see it attempted with with one of the real flagship you know most famous most popular characters at some point there's this character have you ever watched agents of shield sure so henry simmons oh yes okay yes I know you're talking. now back in the well, i don't know if, i don't know how old is he how old is that dude 50 He's 50? Yeah. Wow. Well, when he was in his 30s, if they said, yo, we're changing this, we're casting a black Superman, I'd believe it. <laughs> I'd be like, yes, I want to see that. Because he, he he looks like he can play that that role. But again, <laughs> it's, it's tough to pull off. One day it will happen. And... I'm sure, I hope hopefully they pick the right guy to portray those characters. Um ladies and gentlemen, this was a very very interesting show. Please comment in the comment section below if you disagree or agree. What would you like to see? Um uh, do you think certain characters should be changed or do you believe that one day we will see? I I I honestly think it will happen one day, but you know, I still I just believe that there's just so many other stories that I want to see. Uh, these certain characters play um, and let us know in the comment section like and subscribe share it with your friends chime in please we, I, I, I'm always checking to see if somebody's commenting and I always try to respond as quickly as possible Brian thank you once again any last words no I think it's a really interesting discussion and like I said I, I am thrilled that you know we are seeing more representation in a lot of the shows characters leads that we got and we didn't talk about the kamala khan casting being made official but a complete newcomer making her on-screen debut who's yeah. of pakistani descent i mean that's mm -hmm. that's that's great so Listen. i think i think it's you know i think it's great that we are starting to move in that direction and i realize what we talked about today is a little bit more of a dramatic leap mm -hmm. relative to what we've seen but mm -hmm. i think it's important to at least talk about yeah listen kamala the, the girl that they cast what's her name again I think it's Balani, I think is her is her last name. Iman Balani. Okay. Uh listen, when I saw what she looked like, then I said, listen, Marvel like you said, Marvel has done it again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um I feel like they saw something and if Kevin get, gave the okay, although his decision making has been questionable as of late um, with Mr. Jamie Foxx if he had any hand in it but 
usually they see something in in, in in an actor or actress that says, yes, I want this person. We've gotten it with Tony Stark. We've gotten it with Thor. We've gotten it with Captain America. We've gotten it with, they've, they've done a pretty, listen, Scarlett Johansson, they've done a pretty good job in casting. So I'm certainly looking forward to it. I think just the cast alone has uh, has created a buzz around this this character that a lot of people in the beginning uh, were, 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 were seemed they seemed hesitant to be excited about it because they weren't weren't sure about it. So, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. I think this is going to be possibly there's going to be a lot of hype around this show when it when it comes on. For sure. Can't wait to see footage. Yeah, yeah. Um, once again, thank you everyone for joining us on this show. Please like and subscribe. Um, and we'll and we're gonna get Tracy and we, I'm I'm hopeful that next week we can get his commentary on, on some of these subjects to hear just what he has to say. Because you know he always has something um, very interesting to say about this stuff. So uh, I'm hoping we can get him back next week. Thank you once again. Have a good night. Please stay safe. And we'll see you next time on The Nerd Generation. Thank you very much.